We are Janet van Um and Encarna Miko. We are part of the Moving Beyond Network. Moving Beyond is a scientific network funded by the European Community's seventh framework program Marie Curie Actions. It consists of nine centers from different fields of expertise, both universities and industrial partners, which collaborate with the aim to perform research on Parkinson's disease and other movement disorder diseases. Each center trains a candidate to become an expert within the field of movement disorder diseases. The nine European expertise centers are University of Tübingen, MacRoberts in The Hague, University College of London, Motec Medical in Amsterdam, Radboud University in Nijmegen, Karolinska Institute in Stockholm, Bosch Healthcare in Stuttgart, Hokoma in Zurich, and Tel Aviv Suraski Medical Centrum. All of them are connected. And the funding is used for research. Janet van Um is a Dutch physiotherapist and biomedical scientist. And her work is supervised by Professor Walter Metzler, a neurologist at the University Hospital of Tübingen, Germany. The central theme of their project is the quality of life of people living with Parkinson's disease. Encarna Miko Amigo is a Spanish biomedical engineer and she is supervised by Rob Lemo, the president of the McRoberts company in the city of Hague, the Netherlands. McRoberts is a professional business in the ambulatory assessment of human movement. The central aim of their project is to find preclinical and progression parameters of Parkinson's disease with the use of body-worn sensors. Our research projects are performed in close collaboration. Performing high-quality research is a complicated process that requires several steps. The main factors and steps of our project are summarized as follows. Any research project starts from a situation which is of interest for a scientific group. Parkinson's disease is the second most common neurodegenerative disorder. This disease affects functioning of some parts of the brain due to progressive generation and death of neurons within the brain. Both motor and non-motor symptoms are manifested and the severity of symptoms progress along the time of the disease. Haben Sie irgendeine Form von Veränderungen in Ihrer Beweglichkeit gefühlt während oder beziehungsweise vor der Diagnose des Parkinson's? Ja, also es war halt zittrig und ähm, es war noch, ja, so weit hat man sie nicht angelaufen können. Mhm. Wie hat sich Ihr, Ihr Gangbild verändert während der Erkrankung des Parkinson's? Als ich es damals auch war, ich bin immer so rumgeschlurft. Ja, dass, dass man diese einen Arm runterhängen hat, also praktisch wie wenn er gebrochen gewesen wäre oder so. Und dann noch einmal den, den, den rechten Fuß nachgezogen. Ja. Da, also wenn ich gut drauf bin, dann laufe ich halt entsprechend. Und dann sind, wenn die Offphase sind, da komme ich gar nicht, meistens gar nicht vorwärts. Mhm. Haben Sie schon mal das Gefühl gehabt, dass Sie am Boden festgeklebt sind? Ja, wirklich jede Nacht, wenn ich so aufs Klo muss. Mhm. Ich habe es vorher nicht so gehört, aber es ist wirklich so, dass man da steht und nicht mehr weiterkommt. Mhm. Haben Sie im Laufe dieses Festklebens am Boden mhm. ähm, schon einmal einen Sturz erlebt, auch während dem letzten Jahr? Nein, also ein Sturz ist bei mir immer anders. Mhm. Das ist bei mir, wenn ich zu so schnell durch die Gegend. Ja, ja, dass Sie nicht mehr bremsen können? Mhm, ja. Haben Sie Angst zu fallen oder zu stürzen? Ja, natürlich. Ja. Mhm. Bei besonderen äh, ja, Tätigkeiten? Nee, allgemein. Allgemein. Mhm. Tun hat sich Ihr Krankheitsbild in Bezug auf die Gangstörungen, die Stürze und vor allen Dingen auch die 
um, Freezing, also dieses Festkleben mm. am Boden, hat es Ihre Lebensqualität beeinträchtigt? Ja, schon, weil ich äh, die Armutsten trage mir eigentlich nicht mehr vor, dass ich mein Liebste, wenn ich da bin. Mhm. Haben Sie auch, ich sage jetzt mal, im Haushalt mhm. Veränderungen vorgenommen, zum Beispiel architektonischer Art, dass Sie Lifte installiert haben, Treppengeländer äh, installiert haben? Ähnliches. Also wir hätten die, die äh, beim Hausdresse, die schützt doppelt so groß, da kann ich mit dem Rollator dann durch mhm. irgendwas. Und zwar hat immer genauso gemacht. Ja. Mhm. Vielen Dank. Mhm. Dankeschön, Frau Lechner. Ja, danke. Genau. Both partners, the University Hospital of Tübingen and the McRoberts company are interested in the study of Parkinson's disease. And this common interest was a set point for a collaboration. Scientific questions are formulated around a specific objective in this situation of interest. Some of the questions to be answered within the collaboration of both partners are What are the symptoms of Parkinson's disease? Are physical changes noticed before the diagnosis? How is gait affected by Parkinson's disease? Does it change with the progression of the disease? How does Parkinson's disease affect quality of the patient's life? In order to find proper answers to our scientific questions, we need to follow some steps. The first step is a literature review. In this phase, we study the field of interest to find information related to scientific questions. Therefore, we analyze previously found results. We analyze scientific history, why, what, and how other scientists perform their research on our specific topic. And we study available techniques to optimize our research. All this available information allows us to select the correct direction to achieve our scientific objectives. The next step is planning research. Once our scientific objectives are clear, we define the task for each member of the collaboration. Hello, my name is Janet van Jum. I am the PhD fellow in Tübingen and Walter Metzler is my supervisor. We are interested in quality of life of people with Parkinson's disease and factors that have an effect on quality of life. It is, for example, known that physical activity affects quality of life. We would like to measure that objectively and therefore we give people sensors they can wear during the day. These sensors do not disturb the daily life and give an idea of the physical activity people have during the day. We use McRobert sensors. That is a close partner in cooperation within the Moving Beyond team. And Karna is the PhD fellow that works over there. And therefore we have many projects we do together. Hello, my name is Encarna Mico Amigo and I perform my research with the industrial partner MacRoberts and the Free University of Amsterdam. We evaluate the use of this sensor, accelerometer and gyroscopes, in persons with risk of developing Parkinson's disease, in patients with Parkinson's disease and in healthy elderly. They walk with the sensor very short distances and afterwards we evaluate the acceleration of their movements to calculate some parameters like the periodicity of their steps, the rigidity of their trunk and also how slow or how fast they walk and many other parameters. Everything with the aim to detect motor symptoms at different stages of the disease. We collaborate with Tübingen University measuring and analyzing data of subjects from their hospital. Once the tasks of each member are clear, we define components for our experiments, population groups, protocols and instruments. And then we apply for ethical approval, since the board of the ethical commission has to agree on the study proposal. Once it is accepted, we continue with the following steps. 
The third step is performing the experiments and collecting the data. First are patients selected and contacted. Then we inform the patients about our objectives, tasks, risks, characteristics. And if they agree with these, then they can sign the informed consent. We measure the patients. We measure the size, their weight and limbs. Afterwards, the patients fill out the questionnaires, such as a questionnaire of quality of life. Then we prepare our participants with the required equipment, such as wearing a body fixed sensor. Once the patients are set up, they perform the protocol. And at the end, we thank them for participation. The next step is the data analysis and research. In this phase, we analyze the available information and the collected data with our sensors. We also evaluate the questionnaires filled by our participants. Afterwards, we need to classify, order, compare, interpret and study the obtained data and available information. For that, we develop algorithms and we apply statistical methods. At the end, all the collaboration members will discuss and interpret the results and compare it with previous results out of the literature in order to obtain a global answer to our scientific questions. The fifth and last step is the dissemination of results. For that, we have to report and publish the study and the results and conclusions. We must disseminate our findings by participating in congresses and conferences at national and international level. And we strengthen our networks with other scientists or we can establish new ones. The results give an answer to our initial questions. The first question, what are symptoms of Parkinson's disease? Mom motor symptoms can be sleeping behavior disorder, such as vivid dreams and movements during these dreams, constipation and reduced smell. Also, motor symptoms can be there, such as bradykinesia, which is the slowness of movements, 
postural instability, tremor of the extremities, and rigidity of the trunk. The second question, are physical changes noticed before the diagnosis? Yes, they are. Non-motor symptoms can be present before the diagnosis and motor symptoms can be present before the diagnosis. Some of them are so subtle that recognition at early stages is difficult. But with our sensors, we can analyze acceleration of movement in patients with a risk of developing Parkinson's disease. The information gathered out of these sensors might help us to detect physical changes in early stages. And that might help us to set the diagnosis Parkinson's disease earlier. The third question, is gait affected by Parkinson's disease? Yes, but it can differ between patients. Does it change with the progression of the disease? Yes, it changes as the disease progresses. And how is gait affected by Parkinson's disease? Well, there are several changes. The trunk can be rigid. There are small and irregular steps. There can be some difficulties to start and finish walking. There can be difficulties to coordinate movements. Balance can be lost. And it's likely to have reduced arm swing in one side of the body. The last question. How does Parkinson's disease affect the patient's quality of life? It can be said that Parkinson's disease affects the quality of life, but the extent to which the quality of life is affected differs per patient. For example, migration or transport from A to B can be difficult and that can have an effect on quality of life. Some patients experience that they are dependent on others. PD patients affect timetables and planning, especially due to the intake of medication on strict time points during the day. PD patients might experience eating difficulties, especially due to the tremor in their hands. The unpredictable character of PD might affect social activities, and the PD may affect physical activity and some patients also suffer of depression. With all this information and more that will come soon from our research, we can say that our objectives are to understand the progression of Parkinson's disease, to study the effect of the disease in the patient's quality of life. Because we aim to support neurologists to set early diagnosis of Parkinson's disease, optimize the treatment and improve the patient's life. We believe that research creates new ideas, improves patient's quality of life, improves the development of the society and it makes it accessible to the widest possible population by reducing costs, all together to achieve a better world. Thank you very much, Janet and Encarna.